Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and I'm gonna do a quick pregnancy update. Well, I hope it's quick. I haven't seen you guys since I was like 28 weeks or something like that and now I'm 33 weeks. So I have a lot to cover and I'm gonna try to do it real quick. Um, and I'm gonna try to not sound negative, like negative Nancy, you know? <laughs> now I'm 33 weeks and three days, but I'm gonna go back to when I was 30 weeks and I have some notes over here so if I'm like looking over, it's because I'm reading the notes. Okay, so at 30 weeks, um, I had a doctor's appointment for 315. Um, so I went to the doctor's, me and Derek went, and you all know it's a struggle for me to actually get to where I have to go because of this pubic dysfusia or whatever, um, you know, pelvic griddle, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so I went to the doctor's and my appointment, like I said, was 315. I go in and they're like, oh, your doctor's behind and I'm like okay like he's always behind how much behind is he and they're like oh he's on his 115 appointment I was like well it's 315 and he's on his 115 y'all want me to stay here till about six o'clock and wait for everybody else the room was packed I'm like no forget it so right then and there I was like that's the end of that I felt like my doctor one didn't care he was just gonna induce me at 36 weeks um when I did see him, he was like, um, it was very rushed whenever I saw my doctor because he had so many um, patients that he was kind of just rushing through it. So I never really felt like we had a connection, like he really cared. It was kind of just like another patient, another pay, you know, another paycheck. Keep it pushing. Um, so yeah, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm not dealing with this. I was like, can you guys release my records? I called up another hospital or another OBG and they were like, um, you know, we'll send over your records to them. So I'm at a totally different hospital now, a totally different doctor. Um, I met with her, I believe the following week. Um, yeah, the following week. And that was 31 weeks when I met with her and she was super nice. Um, when I met with her, she was like very caring. I think we met for like an hour and 45 minutes. So I was like, yeah, I love her. Like, she's awesome. But she's also very, like, um, we're going to do everything naturally. Like, she's like, I'm not inducing you no matter what. Like, whenever the baby decides to go, the baby's going to go. They have, like, midwives there and stuff like that. So I was like, mm, I don't really know how I feel about that, but whatever. Um, so this brings us to 31 weeks. They said I have pubis, pubis dysfusia. I don't really know what it is. I don't know how to pronounce it, I'm sorry. It's when your pelvic, um, it's when your body produces too much hormones and your hormones that make your um, pubic area loosen up for birth, but it produces way too much and your body becomes like, not your body, but your hip bones and pelvic area becomes very um, loose and your, your pelvic can shift. So, <coughs> It makes like walking, standing, sitting, rolling over, doing regular day to day activities really hard. The pain is excruciating. Um, I've never felt anything like this before in my life. I think I mentioned it in my last video that when I went to the doctors, my old doctors, he prescribed me this belly band, this belly support band, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work for me. It's too small. When I say it's too small, I mean like it doesn't lift me up I don't know and it just kind of just sits on the baby I'm huge you guys so this belly band I knew it wasn't gonna work when I saw it um so yeah I have pubis dysphagia so I take really small steps um, I can't really do any more like day-to-day -day activities um, when I say like day-to-day -day, like normal stuff I mean like I can't go to the grocery store by myself I I cannot get dressed by myself. Derek has to help me, like, put on my socks, put on my pants, because I cannot lift my legs. Um, when I get into bed, Derek has to um, shift me from side to side. Um, when I use the bathroom, I can't sit on the toilet. I'm now in the squatting position 24-7 whenever I'm using the bathroom because it kills to have to bend down and sit on the toilet and get back up. Um... A lot of people, not a lot of people, some people get it for a little bit, others get it until almost six months after they give birth, and um, some people 
can deal with it and walk normal or whatever and do whatever. Some people are, they have wheelchairs or crutches to kind of help them. Whenever I go out, I have Derek always, or I use the, um, the scooters that they have like in the stores, like in Walmart and Target. Those are pretty much the only two stores I go to because I know they have those. So when I went to my appointment, like we talked for like hour 45 minutes, she told me about that. Um, she, they told me I'm severely anemic and I need to get on it. So they had me on the, like a totally different diet um, because they're scared if, when I give birth, I'm gonna bleed out and I don't accept blood, other people's blood. Um, you know, my own personal reasons. So they did suggest a blood transfusion, but you know, I'm not about that life. Some people are, some people aren't, I'm not. Um, so I'm like on a different diet and because of the anemia, I have pica really bad where I'm just eating tissue, not eating it, but like I chew it constantly, um, constantly, constantly. Um, my hair's falling out, my nails, that used to be long. I don't even care about them anymore. Yeah, my nails are like done. They're like turning different colors or different lengths or cracks. I haven't painted them because I'm just over it. Um, my hair fell out so I had to get braids um, to kind of put it in a protective style. That's why I have these in now. And um, what else has went on when I was 30 week, 31 weeks? Um, oh, I started producing milk. Baby which is something that I've been like dying. I couldn't wait for my, I couldn't wait to produce milk because with Maya, I wasn't able to breastfeed because I stopped producing milk right, right when I um, gave birth. So I'm like praying, I'm like, please keep up with this milk supply. And also I was wondering if I was gonna be able to breastfeed because I got my breast done um, a few years ago, <clears throat> I think three years ago. So I was just curious to see if I was even gonna be able to do it which I am, hopefully, fingers crossed. When I was 31 weeks, I woke up one morning in excruciating pain. I was screaming out. Um, when I was laying in bed, Derek moved my legs. I don't know if it was the wrong way or what, and I just started screaming and crying, and it was just bad, it was bad, bad, bad. Um, so I called my doctor. She didn't call me back, so I took my butt to the ER like any normal human would if they felt like their bro bone was broken or something like that. And uh, of course they have to like admit you into labor and delivery, so I had to go to labor and delivery. My doctor came, she was pissed, and she turned into a bee. She was like, I don't know what you think this is. I know you were at your other doctor's office and you were complaining about your pelvic area. Nothing's gonna change. Um, I'm not inducing you. It doesn't matter what you do, how many times you come in, I'm not inducing you. Um, and then she just kind of started saying things like, um, I don't know if you guys have a car or transportation, but maybe, I don't know if you have one, a YMCA membership. Maybe you can try to get one of those and use the pool. And I'm like, what? Why wouldn't we have transportation one? And what makes you think that we don't have a YMCA Membership is like $45. It's not even like expensive For some people whatever I'm Like so she was like super like one of those doctors like super judgy um, And just super aggressive. I'm like the first time I met you you were real cool and now you're not mm, I don't know if I like you anymore So then she called me back the next day um, Was it the next day? Yeah, it was the next day, and she was, like, super nice, and she was like, um, you know, I want to get you in physical therapy to kind of help you out, <sighs> blah, blah, blah. So now I'm in physical therapy twice a week, I think, maybe more. Um, I went today. I'm 33 weeks now. I went to physical therapy. She kind of showed me what not to do and what, what to do. Which I kind of already knew, like, because I know I'm not going to spread my legs open wide because it hurts. So you don't need to tell me to keep your legs closed. And then she's kind of like, well, you know, when you go into the car, don't put one foot in. Derek! I'm recording a video. Yeah, you know, you don't have to tell me when I get into the car, like, don't put one foot in and then put the other one in. Put them both in at the same time because it hurts already. I already know not to do that. Um, 
So, but she did show Derek some massage techniques and stuff like that that he can do on me to kind of help, which they help so much. When I went into the physical therapist's office today, one, I was not able to walk much. Like, I'm, ta I'm talking like, I was walking like this. When I left, I was able to go like that. <laughs> um, and I couldn't sit on... Like in the middle, I had to lean to the side. Um, oh, it felt so good. Yeah, I had to lean to the side um, before I went in because my groin area just hurt. It killed. Um, when I left, I was able to sit. I'm, I'm still able to sit like this and not to the side. Um, other than that, other than the physical pain that I'm feeling, I am super... I don't want to say super depressed, but I'm depressed because of this um, pubis, this, whatever, however you say it, pelvic griddle, because I can't do anything. I always need help. Um, I kind of feel like neat. it's like a needy. Like, I feel like I'm disabled, but I'm not disabled. I feel bad because I can't do activities with Maya, and this is like the last month we have together before she has a sibling. And, you know, I did have a lot of stuff planned for us. We're supposed to go to the water park and... All this other stuff, and I just can't move. I physically can't move. I can't even um, wash your hair anymore because it, it hurts to bend over. I can't cook dinner anymore unless it's like something I have to pop in the microwave because I can't stand over the stove. It's just everything is affected by this pelvic griddle. And not a lot of people understand. A lot of people are more like, um, when you're pregnant, you know, it's not a disability or oh, you're just being dramatic. But it's really... Like, I really can't move. So I guess it's more like support, and then you feel needy. A lot of people comment about how big my stomach is. Like, oh my god, you're so big. So that kind of gets to you. Um, so, like, I have a little bit of depression right now. Also, I have a shooting pain in my left nipple. It's like a burning shooting pain. I googled it. It's normal. They said, whatever. This is just part of pregnancy. It is what it is. Kind of just suck it up. And I've had a constant headache for about six days now. It's like consistent. I wake up with it, I go to sleep with it, I wake up with it, go to sleep with it. Tylenol does not help, it just, it is what it is. I see my doctor on, fr oh no, I don't see my doctor for another week. But I have an ultrasound on Friday and I will see if the baby's still breached. I still am measuring big. And you guys will see what I mean when I say I'm measuring big. Um, what else? What other symptoms? My morning sickness has come back. I don't know if it's morning sickness or what. Well, it's morning sickness pretty much. Every morning I do get sick and it's terrible. Um, I don't really get nauseous throughout the day anymore. Pretty much, That's pretty much it. Like I can't really, I can't wait until this baby is out. Um, I've been rambling on and on and it kind of seems like I'm just super negative, but I kind of am in a negative place right now with the whole depressed situation that I have going on. Um, but I'm blessed to have my baby boy. We do have a name for him. I'll give you a hint. That's your hint. And you're just going to have to figure out what that means. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. There's a video. Let me know if you guys have pelvic griddle pain. Let me know if you guys are experiencing some, some of the things I'm experiencing. Keep watching. Keep liking. I have a lot of new collabs coming up for you guys. Um, and just a lot of new stuff. All right, bye. Ah, oh, time out. Wait, 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 wait. I gotta show you guys my stomach. And I did gain 18 pounds. I gained 18 pounds. Whoa.